Hello everyone. This is Coder2J. In this video, I will show you how to install Dagster on macOS and Windows and create your first Dagster asset. Sounds excited? Let's get started. I'm currently on macOS. To install Dagster, you'll need a Python version above 3.8 as it's a requirement for Dagster. Let's check the Python version using the command Python version. Here, I have Python version 3.10 installed. Next, let's create a Python virtual environment with the command Python mvin and give it a proper name. For example, .pyenv. Then, we can activate it with the command source.pyenv slash bin slash activate. Now, let's use the pip install command to install the Dagster and Dagster web server packages. Once they are installed, we can begin creating our first Dagster pipeline. A data pipeline can be defined as either a Python file or a Python module. Let's begin by creating a simple Python file called hellodagster.py. Before we delve into creating our pipeline, it's essential to understand the foundational concept in Dagster, assets, or software-defined assets. But what exactly is an asset? An asset is data that requires careful management to ensure its accuracy and keep it up to date. Any form of data can be designated as an asset, including a database table or view, a file on a local machine or AWS S3, a machine learning model, and more. With Dagster, we can effortlessly create a software-defined asset by applying the asset decorator to a Python function. Let's walk through the process. First, we need to import the asset module from Dagster. Once that's done, we can proceed to create our initial asset using the asset decorator on a Python function named my underscore first underscore asset. In the function body, we simply return a list containing one, two, three. Save the Python file. We can start the Dagster web server by the command Dagster dev f followed by our Python file hello dagster.py. From the logs, we can notice that it creates a temporary directory for various development-related files, such as run history and scheduled databases. Once the server is stopped, this directory is automatically deleted. The Dagster web server can be accessed locally at port 3000. On Windows, we should begin by creating a project folder called Dagster Tutorial. After creating the folder, open it in Visual Studio Code. Make sure you have Visual Studio Code installed. To double check that we have Python version 3.8 or above installed on your system, open a command prompt terminal and use the command Python version. Here, I have Python version 3.10 installed. Next, we are going to create a Python virtual environment called .pyenv. Activate the Python environment using the activation script. Now we can install the Dagster and Dagster web server modules. Then we can create the Python file hellodagster.py and define our first asset. Now we can launch Dagster using the command Dagster dev f hellodagster.py. The Dagster web server UI can be assessed locally at port 3000. Now, let's open this link in a web browser to access the Dagster web server's user interface. By clicking the menu button, you can see that the current code location is the Python file named hellodagster.py. Below that, you will find a list of all the asset groups defined in this Python file. Since we didn't specify an asset group name, our first asset is categorized under the default group. Clicking on it, you'll be able to view my underscore first underscore asset in the lineage view. If you have multiple assets, the lineage view provides a clear visualization of the dependencies between assets. In the list view, you'll find all the assets listed. Let's go back to the lineage view. In this view, you'll notice that our asset currently lacks a description and has never been materialized. By clicking on our asset, you can access more detailed information about it. And at the top, you will find a button labeled Materialize Selected. Clicking this button will trigger the execution of our asset. 
when we click the Materialize selected button, a notification will appear, indicating that a new run has been initiated. On the right side of the interface, you can find metadata about the most recent run of our asset, including the timestamp and the storage path for the asset's results. Next, let's click the View Logs button. Here, you can observe a sequence of events that occurred during the execution of our asset run. Towards the end of the log, you'll encounter an event named Run Success, indicating that the materialization run of our asset was successful. Additionally, you can access logs in the stout and stare. The stout is empty, since we didn't generate any output. In the stare, you'll find some debug logs. From the log, you can see that it first starts executing my underscore first underscore asset and yields the return value, which is then written as a pickle file to the storage path using the pickled object file system IO manager. The pickled object file system IO manager is the default IO manager responsible for persisting the output of an asset in storage, allowing it to be loaded as input for downstream assets. In future tutorial videos, we will delve into the topic of IO managers in greater detail. So make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell. Now, let's return to Visual Studio Code. In the temporary directory, you'll find another folder called Storage. Inside this folder, there is a directory that stores the run logs and a binary file named my underscore first underscore asset. This binary file represents the return value of our asset. Let's open a new terminal in VS Code to verify this. Ensure that you have activated the same Python virtual environment. Then, open the Python console and import the pickle module to load the binary file. Copy the relative path of the binary file and open it in binary mode. Use the pickle.load method to load the file. You should see that the output is a list with three elements, one, two, three, which matches the return value we defined in our asset file. To address the absence of a description, we can add a doc string to our asset. For example, this is our first asset for testing purposes. After saving the Python file, return to the web browser. The description won't appear automatically. We need to reload the code location. There are two ways to do this. First, you can click the reload button located at the bottom right next to the Python file name. Alternatively, you can click the reload button at the top right, next to the asset group. Selecting either option will reload the Python file hellodagster.py, and you'll see the description we defined in the doc string displayed in the interface. We can also write some logs. For example, a message using the print method. We can add logging to our asset. To do so, we should import asset execution context and add a parameter called context with the type asset execution context. Then, we can utilize the logger from the context to create a simple info log message. After saving the file, return to the web browser. Start by clicking the reload button to refresh the code location. Then, select our asset and click the materialize button. Once the process is complete, you can review the run and the logs. By clicking the View Logs button, you'll notice that the print message appears in the stout log, and the log info message is visible in the stare log. This allows you to effectively monitor and track the execution of your asset. That is it. You've learned how to install Dagster on macOS and Windows and create your first Dagster asset. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing and giving it a thumbs up. Feel free to let us know what topics you'd like to see covered in the next video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.